Hi, I'm Patricia with Buzz and Bark Animals. <laughs> I love this. This is actually, I got this um, when I was still in Washington State. It's a, I thought it was a snow leopard, but it's just a leopard. It's a regular leopard, and it is so adorable. It's not a real animal, but no, it kind of looks real. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of Koshi chimes just to get us in the spring mood. Looks like it's. Well, this one's not working. Usually, if you turn it upside down, it unsticks it. Okay, I'm not gonna use that one. I'm just gonna use this one, and this is for the element of fire. That's perfect, right? Springtime. All kind of fired up. Okay, so today's Reiki, this is part of the Reiki series, and we're going to talk about bringing a new animal into the home, because that's a type of transition. The last video I did was on the death transition. You might want to go look at that. Okay, so this is a Reiki series. It's going to be like a five-part series about how we can use Reiki to help our animal companions. And when we're bringing a new animal into the home, there's a lot of preparation that needs to happen. We need to prepare the space. We need to, if you have a family, especially a big family, and you've, or if your family includes other animals, then you need to have a conversation with everybody in that household, including the animals. And you need to let them know that somebody new is coming in. And if you have other pets, you know, you want to bring in all the new dog beds or new cat beds or whatever kind of animal you're going to bring in. You want to bring in all the things that you're going to need ahead of time. And you can let the other animals sniff at it or, you know, just kind of, um, you know, set some boundaries with them and say, okay, this is going to be uh, the place for the new animal that's coming in. And you can talk to your animals like you would just talk to other people they do understand um, they can pick up you know when we're talking we actually have uh, we're visualizing things we don't realize it half the time but we're visualizing so they're picking up on whatever we're visualizing and you want to also remember you want to keep things in a more positive light so you don't want to have visions of the animals attacking each other or you don't want to have visions of everything that could go wrong because if you do that then what's going to happen is you're going to set up this new animal for failure and you don't want to do that so you want to prepare all the animals ahead of time you want to prepare the people in the family ahead of time if you're bringing in a dog then you need to delegate the responsibilities like who's going to be cleaning up after the dog who's going to be feeding the dog who's going to walk the dog who's going to take the dog to the vet you know just get all of that um, organized ahead of time you might want to get one of those big white calendars, you know, the ones that you put on the wall, unless you do it all on the computer. I think the ones on the wall are better because then the whole household can see, like, who's in charge of what. And also, it, you can keep track of when you're going to go to the vet and when you're going to do all these other things. And to keep track of, um, I know for animals, they have to get vaccines. And so there are certain dates that they have to get them. Uh, it's another topic altogether. Um, so... Things need to be organized, like, you know, when is the litter box going to be cleaned out, hopefully often, and and all the other things um, that you need to do. So you need to do all that ahead of time before you even bring the animal into the house. And then when you bring the animal to the house, you want to, and you can even hire a Reiki person to come in and clear all the energy out of the house. Because, um, you know, any unwanted energy. So if people have been fighting in the house, if there's been a lot of noise, um, that's the other thing, too, is the, the idea of noise. You want to talk to, especially if you have teenagers or children that are really loud, you need to explain to them, like, animals are very sensitive, and they're very sensitive to sounds and noises and things like that. So you want to create a quieter household. You want to create a drama-free household. You want everybody to be as calm and confident as possible. And, and children can be calm and confident. They don't have to be all just crazy. So... You know, so you want the family to be calm and confident. You want every, you want the household to be cleansed of all this, um, you know, darker energies, chaotic energies. Because who wants to come into, you know, your first um, time in a space? You don't really want to be barraged with like everybody's energy. You don't want the TV blasting, the stereo blasting, people slamming their doors. 
and you know a bunch of like weird aromas coming from the kitchen and you want to bring in these animals realizing that they're very empathic they're very sensitive it, especially if you're bringing in a turtle or a rabbit they're extremely sensitive um, cats and dogs can be sensitive as well so you want to think of be in their paws right and so you know like the saying you want to walk in another person's shoes you want to walk in their paws how would you want to come into a household like what what kind of feelings would you want to feel? You want to feel welcomed, right? You want to feel safe. You want to feel secure. The other thing too is um, you need to get them a, a space where they can eat and quiet. So when they have their first meal and really when they have all their meals, they need to be alone. You know, they don't need people watching them while they eat because that's just really nerve wracking. Now you might have a Velcro dog coming in or a Velcro cat. And then in that case, you can sit nearby, but you don't have to be hovering over their, their dish while they're eating you know that's probably a good way to get bitten or scratched or you know you don't want to have that as your first episode so also know that when you're bringing the animal into the house it isn't going to be like you're going to have all these expectations of what you think it's going to be it's going to be all this perfect you know hallmark card kind of um, sentimentality and it's not going to be like that you you could end up with a timid animal that hides in the corner you could end up with an animal that ends up barking at the other animals you could end up with a cat that gets into a fight with another animal I mean there there could be a lot of chaos and so you're trying to avoid as much chaos as possible so you want to prepare the house um, Reiki practitioners some of them such as myself can actually well I don't do this right now but they can go into a house and we can clear the energy like from room to room and or whatever the main rooms are and we can clear the energy out and then bring in some of the unconditional loving um, light force energy which can make the place way more comfortable for an animal but we can also do that remotely by giving the whole family uh, a reiki a remote or distance reiki treatment for the household for the family for the animals that are there and the one coming in. So we can definitely do that. We can also do Reiki when the animal is already in the house. So uh, maybe a weekly thing, maybe for the next four weeks or something, you you hire a Reiki person to like one day a week, you know, to raise up the frequency of everybody and to help everybody be calm and confident and have a sense of well being, because that's going to be very comforting for the animal as they're bonding with each family member and also there could be some rivalry like if there's children and they want the animal they want to be the favorite for that animal and so they're kind of like vying for attention of the animal that could be very stressful to the animal as well it's the animal's decision of who it's going to bond with who he or she is going to bond with it's not something you can um, force on an animal and you know i know when i was a kid i would feel kind of dejected if a pet liked my brother or my sister more than me, you know, it, it's just, I think it's just part of being a child, you know, when children do have big egos. I mean, no one likes to really say it, but it's true because they're developing their, their sense of, of more of the spirit and more of the emotional intelligence. It doesn't happen right away. And, you know, and so there could be some rivalry happening within the family. It could even be like the adults that are like, no, it's my dog. No, it's my dog or my cat or whatever. And so there could be, you know, like maybe one person adopts the animal, but the animal ends up liking the, the other partner or somebody else more in the household than the person who brought in the adoption. So, you know, don't let your personal feelings get in the way of the well-being of the animal. Okay, so the other thing to remember is when you're bringing an animal into the house, and no matter how much you plan, no matter how much you prepare, um, you really don't know. It's a wild card. You don't know how this animal is going to react. There could be no problems. It could be that the animal just immediately, like a golden retriever, just bonds to everybody and everybody's happy. Or it could be that the animal is having some behavioral issues, and you don't want to immediately take this animal back to the, the shelter wherever you've got the animal. You want to work with, if it's a dog, you want to work with a trainer. If it's, um, you know, you could work with Reiki or animal communicator. You can do a lot of different things, but don't just automatically, you know, go, oh, this animal's problematic. They're digging in my garden or whatever it is. We're taking the, the animal back to the shelter. That's very traumatic for an animal. And then for the next people who end up adopting that animal, if somebody ends up adopting that animal, it's going to be even harder for them to work with that animal because it's going to have even more trauma piled on trauma. So you want to 
you know, I mean, one, you want to do your research on the breed. You want to make sure that usually a shelter will do a home visit and they'll make sure that you've got a high enough fence. They'll, you know, they'll go through your household and, and, and make suggestions. Um, the other thing you want to do is you want to get rid of any toxic chemicals that you have in your household, and that includes personal hygiene products. You want to replace it with natural products. And I, I'm not just saying this because I'm chemically sensitive. I'm saying this because animals are also chemically sensitive. And there is nothing sadder than an animal developing cancer because they've been exposed to certain chemicals in your household, which may be normal to you. And and you have to remember they're more sensitive than we are. They have um, a higher metabolism because they live, you know, a faster metabolism because they live a shorter amount of years than we do. They develop much quickly. Um, and then there's those, um, you know, those teenage years, you know, where they've got hormones and all the rest of that stuff happening, uh, just like, you know, humans do during their teen years or, or even preteen years. So you got to remember a lot of different things. So you want to research the breed, you want to research the type of animal, you want to um, research uh, what is toxic to them, like what foods can they eat, what foods are poisonous for them. You want to remove any uh, poisonous house plants, especially if you're bringing in a cat, because cats can sometimes chew on plants and they could get poisoned and die. And, you know, you want to just um, make sure that your electrical cords and things are, you know, you can get things to safely tuck them away. And uh, you just don't want a bunch of cords all over the house, uh, especially if you've got a rabbit, because rabbits will actually chew on cords. Pet rats, all of the, the rodents will chew on, um, on cords and they can get electrocuted. And you want to make sure that the enclosure that you're putting them in or the way that, you know, um, whether you're going to be crate training for an animal or whatever you're going to be doing, just make sure that that's up to um, whatever the standards are for that particular animal and you know make sure that the food you're getting is high quality and all these things and that brings me to budget if you're going to bring an animal into your house you really got to have a budget animals are expensive um, if you're feeding them cheap food then you're going to have cancer and, and diabetes and other kinds of diseases down the road that are going to be really expensive vet bills I mean, that's what chokes people up, and that's when they end up dumping an animal off at a shelter because they can't afford the medical care. There's also a lot of low-income um, animal clinics. There's um, different grants that people can get. There's, there's a lot of different resources out there. So if you do end up with an animal that gets sick or you're bringing in a senior animal into your house, look for those grants that can help you out with the medical bills because they do exist. There's quite a few of them, actually. Usually you can find them on the Humane Society under resource, you know, their websites under resources, you know, and then you have to apply for them and, you know, but also just budget, just know like, okay, this animal is going to cost me this much a month, right? You know, budget the food, budget, budget how many vets appointments are going to have put an emergency or either get pet insurance or get an emergency fund together because animals, things happen, right? Dogs can get bloat. And you don't want to just ignore that. That They can die from that. It's a very painful death. That's when the, I think, air gets into the stomach and the stomach kind of twists. Um, there's a scene from that in that movie, Marley and Me. And I know that's a fiction movie, but bloat is a real thing for animals, especially, I mean, for dogs, especially if they have a narrow chest. Is it a narrow chest or is it a wide chest? I think it's the narrow and the wide. No, it's the narrow chest. So like the greyhound, the pointer, um, the visla, the weimaraner, um, th there's quite a few breeds that can actually get um, the bloat and the bloat can kill them. So that is an emergency veterinarian that uh, requires sometimes surgery and, and some other things. An animal could accidentally eat chocolate um, that could kill them or they get uh, into uh, xylitol like candy that has xylitol in it or they get a lifesaver stuck down their throat now why they're eating a lifesaver is because it fell on the floor and a lot of animals will just eat everything off the floor so you got to be really really careful and have a budget an emergency plan know who the emergency vet is you know make sure that you've got your your veterinarian and everything lined up before you even get the animal if you're getting a smaller animal like a rabbit or a guinea pig a lot of vets don't do small animals. You may actually have to go out of town, especially a gerbil or a hamster or whatever. Um, your vet may not, your local vet may not do small animals of that size. So another one is the birds. You got to find a special vet for birds, um, reptiles. All of these things need vet care, right? But not all vets care for every single animal. So you need to know ahead of time which vet you're going to go to, how far away they are. 
You know, are they in another city? Is it a two hour drive? I mean, you need to figure out all this stuff ahead of time before you even bring the pet into your house. It might be that it's not feasible to get that pet. You may want a pet snake, you may want a lizard or something, but there's no vet nearby. So then you don't get that animal because you don't know what to do if something happens to the animal. No, animals are not indestructible. You don't just bring them in your house like a couch or a car, I mean, cars go to mechanics, but I mean, it's not something you just bring into your house and you just sit there and then they never get sick. So you've got to have a budget. You need to also work on common confidence. Um, if you're not common confident now, that's something you can work on. Also expand, expansive mindset um, to have a more upbeat attitude around the animals. If you tend to get depressed a lot, you might want to get to some mental health counseling because they're affected by that. They're affected by every single thing we do, everything we think, everything we feel. They pick up everything. And if you want this animal to have a long life, if you want to bond deeply with this animal, if you want to have good memories with this animal and not a bunch of tragedies, then there's a lot to plan for. There's a lot to research. There's a lot to, uh, again, be prepared for. Um, you might even take emergency, uh, what do you call it, like um, CPR and, you know, for animals and uh, emergency preparedness you know, for an animal in case something happens, like if they break their leg, you know what to do before you get them to the vet, you know how to do a splint, you know how to do, um, you know, a, a bandage for a wound or whatever, so that you can get this animal to a vet, like an emergency vet, but you'll know what to do in the meantime to keep that animal alive. So there's a lot of things you can do. Um, I mean, that's mostly with dogs and cats, but you know, you might also learn that for if you're going to bring rabbits in your house, um, there's a lot of things. Now, the other thing you need to learn about is how do you care for them in your home? Like if it's if you're a first time pet owner, how do you take care of a rabbit? What is a rabbit's needs? And, you know, it's not just putting them in a, in a, a hutch and, and feeding them and giving them water. It's so much more than that. Um, there's a lot of different diseases animals can get. How do you know how to check for those diseases? How do you do a home check? You know, what about bathing? Who, how, who's going to bathe the animal? Are you going to take the animals to groomers? Or are you going to do it yourself? And what are the safety with that? So Reiki can help with all of this in the sense that a lot of the information I'm giving you is not Reiki related. But Reiki can come in when there's chaos in the house, when the animal's not feeling well. Obviously, you're going to the vet too. You don't just do the Reiki. And the Reiki is complementary to whatever vet care is happening. But you can also do the Reiki to have a, a calm household. Um, you can even learn Reiki level one. And then you could do a lot of that for yourself and you could save a lot of money. Um, you know, because the money that you uh, that you would normally spend on a Reiki practitioner, you would spend on getting the um, the training for yourself. You could do like Reiki level one is probably all you're ever going to need as far as working with your pets. Um, if but if you want to go further, you can always do Reiki level two as well. But it's good to know the basics. And also, if you don't want to learn Reiki, there's other things that you can learn as well. You can even learn like basic animal communication so that you can, um, you know, feel the energy of your pet and, and, and bond more deeply with them. So there's a lot of different things you can do while you're bringing a new animal into the house. And again, get a list um, together, uh, a checklist, you know, maybe a little notebook or something, and just write everything you need to do before you bring the animal into the house. Are you going to get pet insurance? Are you not going to get pet insurance? Where's the, the nearest vet? Um, are they taking new patients? Um, you might find that you don't even, you know, you might have waiting list to get into a vet, even for just, you know, minor things. You might check your shelters to find out if they have vets that they have contracted that you might be able to get low income um, if you're, if you don't have a, a, a high enough income. Um, just, you know, get all the information together, prepare, and the more you can do that, the more you can research, the more you can prepare. And the more you can set the right environment for this animal, the happier you're going to be with your pet and the less likely you're going to surrender the pet at, at any certain point. I mean, ideally, you want to have the animal until the end of its life. And when the animal gets sick at the end of the life, it's really sad when people actually give the animal up at that point. A lot of the times it's because they can't afford the medical care or they're sick themselves and they're not able to, you know, to handle it. But if they can have another family member or a friend or somebody else help out, that would be great because it's nothing sadder than putting a senior animal in a shelter. And hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, sometimes they go into foster programs, which is a, little, a lot better than a shelter. So that is, my, um, that is my video on Reiki for bringing a new animal into the house. Again, this is a lot to consider. 
You may even, after watching this video, decide you don't want to bring an animal into the house at this time, you know, because it is going to be a lot of work. It is a lot of energy. It does take a lot of time. And if you love animals enough, you don't mind all that. But if you're kind of on the fence and you don't really know if you want to bring an animal into the house, you got to be realistic with yourself. Um, can you commit to that? Because an animal is a commitment, just like a relationship is a commitment, just like a marriage is a commitment, just like raising your children is a commitment. If you have children, having an animal, having a pet in the home is a commitment. It's not something casual. It's not something that you just go, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. So if you love animals enough and you're, and you've got the time and you've got the resources and you're going to bring an animal into your house, congratulations. And you might want to bring a Reiki practitioner on board or learn Reiki yourself. So thank you for watching. Um, subscribe, like, share, comment, please, because <laughs> I'm building this channel. I want to build a community here of animal lovers, you know, people who really care for their, their pets and also for new pet owners. And I am developing a coaching program. I hope to have it ready by July or August this summer so that you can become a cool and calm, confident pet owner. So thank you for being here. Have a wonderful week with you and your pet bonding. And if you like these videos and you want to support this channel, I also leave a PayPal link below. Thank you and have a wonderful week.